Hi everyone. So the purpose of this uh, short lecture is to really focus on the on the reading uh, pre-mediation, which is perhaps one of the more uh, difficult readings of the semester. Uh, pre-mediation was uh, written by um, Richard Grusin, one of the two authors of Remediation. But uh, whereas uh, Remediation was um, uh, published in 1999, um, uh, Pre-mediation came out after. Uh, September 11. It came out in 2004, uh, 2004 as a reflection on uh, the events of uh, 2011 and the media logic that underpins uh, these events. So, um, uh, Grusin's claim is that after the terrorist attacks of September 11, the media system in the U.S. began to change. So, I read this um, uh, quote from his book, Premediation is not to be confused with prediction. Premediation is not about getting the future right, but about proliferating multiple remediations of the future, both to maintain a low level of fear in the present and to prevent a recurrence of the kind of tremendous media shock that the United States and much of the network world experienced on 9-11. So what Grusin is telling us here is really that premediation is not about getting the future right is not to be confused with prediction but it is rather about presenting a set of scenarios of simulating a possible set of scenarios that allow to keep the level of fear and anxiety um, uh, in front of like before the unexpected right a terrorist attack is always unexpected low uh, like giving to the public the feeling that you can in a certain sense, control the future, even if you don't know exactly what's going to happen. So, reflecting upon the book that he had um, co-authored with uh, Bolter in, two, in 1999, uh, Grusin writes, in remediation, we offer the following restatements of remediation, um, as the mediation of mediation, as the inseparability of mediation and reality, and this was the subject of uh, uh, an assignment question and as remedy or reform. Premediation can also be restated, he writes, in three ways as the remediation of future media forms and technology, as the remediation of future events, uh, sorry, as the remediation of future events and effective states, and as the extension of socio technical media networks into the future. Right, what does he mean by this? So, as the remediation of future media forms and technologies, uh, for example, if I uh, think about this, I can think about um, uh, all the uh, information and news about technological uh, development, right? Uh, for example, about uh, the Apple, what Apple will do in the future, what kind of technologies will be uh, released, uh, um, and so all the expectation that is created uh, around the uh, technological innovation and shifts and how they're going to affect our uh, society and our culture. As the remediation of future events and affective states, uh, here uh, you might think about um, scenarios, right, that occur um, after terrorist attacks, what might happen next, um, what's going to be the uh, say, scenario in uh, Syria as the, the war unfolds, uh, what's going to be of the European crisis, and in general, this um, also entailed the extension of social technical media networks into the future, which, yes, you can think about it in terms of uh, uh, scenarios like, say, pundits that are brought on TV shows, but you can also think about the ability, for example, of the stock market uh, to predict the future when investors bet on uh, stocks you know, or uh, also on specific uh, countries' bonds, right? How will this um, specific country perform in the next three, five years? Will they be able to repay their debt or not? And on the basis of that, you decide whether to invest or not. And so, uh, Grusin writes, there are two ways to look at the future. One which operates on a model of prediction, which imagines the future as settled or to be settled, as moving from possible to definite, and another which imagines the future as immanent in the present, as consisting of potentiality that, 
potentialities that impact or affect the present, whether or not they ever come about. Premediation imagines multiple futures with which are alive in the present, which always exist as not quite fully formed potentialities or possibilities. So what he's suggesting here is that, for example, I made the example of the stock market, right? That at the moment in which you are betting on something, you are investing in a company or in a government, depending on what you decide to invest your money in, that specific action as an eff a retroactive, you're thinking about the performance in the future, but immediately it has an effect in the present because the stock market, depending on the combined actions on all the investors, will either go up or down or that specific title, that specific stock you have invested in will go up and or down. So yes, you're thinking about the future, but in actual fact that effect that in that investment has a retroactive effect on the present and can affect the actions of other investors so this is the kind of model that uh Grusin is thinking about right that the future is imminent in the present and that technology precisely allow us to uh, make that uh, potentiality alive in the present so my two questions are, do you think that future-oriented media, right, for example, the attempt of media to turn constantly the unknown into the known, right, by creating models or parallel models of the future as effects on our state of mind and being, um, for example, by keeping, as Grusin suggests, our level of anxiety and fear low? And my second question is, uh, uh, if you want a provocation, right? Wouldn't we all be freer uh, human beings if we, if we were not so glued to our media, not so concerned about unpredictability, and would merely try to enjoy life as it is, right? Why are we so concerned about what might happen to us? Why do not we disconnect and um, try to experience uh, life? outside of mediation. Thank you and I'm looking forward to hearing your responses.